hello, we're doing fingered octaves. And uh, it's if you look at uh, the fingered octaves lifting and tapping um, pages, compared to the, the thirds lifting and tapping page, they're exactly the same exercises, just um, fingered octaves are a lot bigger and harder to do. Unless you just open up the hand, Pretty large hand. Um, the glove size I wear is a large men's. Pretty big for a violin player. Uh, not huge, not near as big as it's our Perlman's hands, but not nearly as small as Midori's either. Um, and she does this just fine. So I'm pretty sure we can all do this. Um, but once again, you have to be very careful with lifting and tapping. You can get hurt doing this if you practice this with a lot of tension. So try to keep the tension down by not pressing so hard when you do this. Notice if I'm a little out of tune, I'll get it in tune, hold it with all fingers down, and hold it, and hold it. I like to hold it for 60 seconds and then pound it 60 times. play out of tune with a bow on octaves too. You have to keep the sounding point really under control. And the way you do that is the sounding point is where the bow touches the string. So you don't want it out here. It just scratches. And you don't want it here because then it just goes to harmonics. So, or ponticello is what that actually called. Um, so fingered octaves. Octaves you want to press on the, keep the bow kind of close to the bridge. And then you press on the lower string more than the upper string with the pressure part of the bow, so how much you're pushing. If you don't, the top note will go flat, and it's not the left hand's problem, it's not the left hand's fault, it's the right hand's fault. I'm going to play that same note with the right hand in the wrong pressing on the wrong string. That's not left hand, I didn't move it. It's in tune. Again, keep one and three down. Fingered octaves, lifting and tapping, two-note drill. 